This video explains subclass distillation from Google AI. Knowledge distillation is a very popular learning algorithm that provides more training signal by tasking a student network to match the class label predictions from a teacher network. However, in the case of binary classification problems, the student network doesn't get much extra signal from the teacher network since it's only predicting two classes. Subclass distillation recovers the benefit of n-class classification by having the teacher invent subclasses implemented with a contrastive loss. This results in better performing student networks that can also be trained faster. The authors demonstrate subclass distillation by artificially compressing CIFAR 10 into CIFAR 2x5 and showing that subclass distillation can recover the original classes. They further experiment with this on Celeb A, Click Prediction, and MNIST. This video will explain the details behind subclass distillation and how it's implemented. This video will explain subclass distillation from researchers at Google AI. This is an interesting new approach to knowledge distillation that requires the teacher network to invent these subclasses in order to provide more information about how it generalizes or how it predicts the label distribution for distilling the knowledge from the teacher into the student network. We'll start by providing a background of what knowledge distillation is. Knowledge distillation is used to transfer the knowledge from a teacher network into a student network. Usually this is used in the setting of model compression like distill BERT, where you have a massive neural network like the BERT model with these massive amounts of uh, transformer decoder block layers, and then you would transfer the knowledge into a smaller capacity model, the benefit of which being it has faster inference time, lower storage costs, lower training costs, and miscellaneous other benefits of having smaller neural networks. But this kind of knowledge distillation of teacher to student, it can also be seen as just a general uh, paradigm for providing more learning signal for neural networks. It's used in the current state of the art, achieving 88.4% top one image net accuracy in self-training with noisy student, where you actually go uh, from teacher network to student network. But in this case, the student network is actually a higher capacity model than the teacher. So you go from the efficient net, uh, like B6 up to B7, and then they invent these new higher capacity efficient nets like L2, L3 to scale up the students with respect to the teacher. So there's two different ways of looking at how knowledge distillation can be used as either a model compression technique or as just a technique generally for providing more learning signal for training these deep neural networks. So the high level idea of it is that usually these data sets have these one hot encoded class label vectors. So if it's something like CIFAR 10 or ImageNet, you would have uh, in the class label Y zeros everywhere and then one in the place of the class label. So it's like, uh, if this is like a ship image, it'd be zero in the place of cat, zero in the place of dog, and then one in the place of ship. So the idea is that you train this teacher network on this one hot encoded class label distribution. And then once the teacher network is training, trying to mimic this uh, predictions, it eventually will produce some prediction like this after it's been trained. So in the end, what it will do is it'll put these very low probabilities onto certain classes, like in the place of the uh, ship class or the, or the cat class, in the case of the dog image, it might assign like 0.00003% to that class. So the idea is to use this distribution of uh, labels in order to train the student network. So another important idea to this is to add this temperature parameter to smoothen out the teacher's uh, prediction of the class labels. So introduced in this paper, Distilling the Knowledge in a Neural Network by Jeff Hinton, Oriel Vignoles, and Jeff Dean, the idea behind adding this temperature parameter in front of the logit of the class prediction before it goes through the softmax is to smoothen out this distribution and provide more learning signal on the classes with really small probabilities. So the amount of knowledge that's transferred from the teacher network into the student network is highly dependent on the number of classes in the data set. So for example, in CIFAR 10, there are 10 different classes. So the when the teacher makes a prediction over an image like dog, the fact that it assigns a little bit of probability to cat, maybe a, a little bit of probability to horse, and then basically zero probability to things like trucks or cars, gives more information to the student network about how to think about that uh, dog image. But in the case of things like binary classification, where you only have two classes, you only have these two uh, predictions from the teacher in order to transfer the knowledge into the student network. So that's the high level idea motivating this paper, subclass distillation, where we're gonna invent these subclasses in order to provide more learning signal from the student network, from the teacher network, especially in the case when you only have two class labels in the original data set. This image depicts the subclass distillation that's implemented in this paper. The first thing to note about this image is the penultimate layer. This is the layer that is right before the final class label prediction that is used in the teacher network and the student network. So the teacher network takes in an input image passes it through a series of convolutions, and eventually it hits this vector before it's compressed into, say, the two class label vector for making the class predictions. 
So it's interesting to note this penultimate layer, and it's something that we'll come back to later in the uh, coverage of this paper. But we're looking at the comparison between subclass distillation and then trying to mimic these intermediate activations in the penultimate layer that are seen as to have more semantic information before they're compressed into the uh, like end class vector for making the class predictions. So the idea behind the uh, classic distillation technique is to do the cross entropy between the teacher's predictions over say the two class label vectors compared to the student prediction and then use that uh, label distribution in order to provide more signal for learning with the student network. So the idea behind subclass distillation is say you had the two class, uh, two class labels to predict. Now you're gonna double that to have four class labels to predict. So you have this four vectors, uh, more distribution in order to provide more learning signal for the cross entropy loss with a student network that's trained to try to mimic the class distribution from the teacher network. So then also in order to still have this uh, class predictions loss, because you're not just training the student network to mimic this uh, distribution, it's a weighting behind the distillation loss and the uh, you know like the class the binary classification prediction loss so what you do is you sum up the two uh, subclasses in order to make up the uh, predictions for the cross entropy loss on that one hot encoded class level vector the key workhorse behind subclass distillation is the way in which subclasses are invented by using a contrastive auxiliary loss so this idea behind contrastive loss functions like in the contrast of self-supervised learning papers like sim clr uh, momentum contrast and contrast of predictive coding is to have this high similarity between positive pairs and then uh, dissimilarity between negative pairs. So the way this is implemented is you pass the image through the convolutional layers, the penultimate layer, and then into the uh, like class label uh, vector. So the idea here is that you wanna have a distribution such that you have high similarity between the uh, data point and itself, and then you know make it as distant as possible from all the other data points in the data set. So the way to do this is to try to assign uh, like a similar vector distribution for similar images and dissimilar representations for uh, non-similar images. So the idea here is say you have this horse image and you pass it through the network and then you get this uh, 202 uh, vector, this V of I after it's been, in the case of this is really normalized so it, they would all be summed so they, uh, the sum of the vector is equivalent for both images. But just for the sake of understanding this idea of dot product similarity, say you have this horse image one is 202, this other one is 080, in this denominator of the uh, similarity, this would be zero. So the idea here is to try to push these uh, vectors as distant as possible while maximizing the similarity with itself. And the way to maximize the similarity with itself is to invent these subclasses in which the images have uh, like these semantic vectors that represent them. This image provides a visual demonstration that information about the images is lost by compressing it into the class label vector compared to that penultimate layer before it goes into the compressed class label vector used for predictions. So by doing a nearest neighbor clustering on this query image with respect to the class logits, you get these images compared to if you uh, do the nearest neighbor clustering on the penultimate layer, you see that you get just the head image compared to the full images of the horses. So this shows this idea that uh, only having the class logits so you just have a horse versus deer or horse versus car or something like that. Only having these class labels are compressing the information that the teacher is able to send to the student network in the form of knowledge distillation. The most similar technique to subclass distillation is penultimate layer distillation in the sense that you're transferring more information from the teacher to the student. But one of the big bottlenecks behind the penultimate layer uh, teacher-student distillation is that the dimensionality of the penultimate layer in the student network is likely to be lower than the teacher, so you have to introduce this weight matrix W in order to project the penultimate layer into a matching dimension with the uh, penultimate layer in the teacher. Amongst these other things, like the subclass distillation generally seems to do a better job of separating these classes with the contrast of loss and producing a more semantic uh, distribution to train the student network than it does a penultimate layer distillation. The first experiment they perform is by clustering the CIFAR 10 dataset into the CIFAR 2x5 dataset, where they group airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer into one class, and then other classes from the CIFAR 10 dataset into the other. And they show how the subclass distillation technique learns to naturally separ separate these classes into the subclass. So you see how they separate uh, the cars, the, uh, the birds, and then these other subclasses from within the classes from this artificially constructed dataset. And then you see the performance achieved by the teacher-student distillation on the original data set compared to uh, just using regular distillation, the uh, penultimate layer distillation, and then the novel subclass distillation technique. In addition to achieving higher performance, they also achieve faster training speed with the subclass distillation. Shown in this uh, top left plot, you see the subclass distillation technique trains faster than the uh, standard distillation technique and the penultimate layer distillation technique. 
It's also interesting to think of ways in which you can speed up the training of these deep neural networks. They also experiment on the Celeb A dataset, where they have about 202,000 of these celebrity face images labeled by about 40 binary attributes like gender, hair color, uh, maybe where they're looking, if they're wearing sunglasses, smiling, things like this. So what they do in this experiment is in the male versus female binary classification task, the subclasses are able to naturally discover this blonde hair versus uh, other colored hair attribute in the subclass distillation when it's inventing these subclasses to separate out the uh, data within the, the uh, female class. So it's really interesting to see this kind of uh, invention of new features, sort of similar to like disentangled representation learning, how it's learning these uh, inherent subclasses just from the binary label evident in these data sets like CIFAR 10 that is uh, manipulated into CIFAR 2x5 to test if this kind of contrast of loss can uh, separate out these classes that have been artificially meshed together. They further test this idea of subclass distillation on the Criteo click prediction experiments. And the idea here is that there are unknown subclasses in the data set. So compared to the CIFAR 2x5, where they artificially mesh these uh, original classes like automobile, ship, dog, into this artificial binary label, and things like Celeb A, that has these more natural subclasses like hair color, or whether they're wearing sunglasses or not, or miscellaneous uh, naturally occurring subclasses like this, in the Criteo uh, click prediction where they're showing them an ad and predicting whether or not they click on the ad, there are less uh, known subclasses in that data set. So in their experiments, they show how the subclass distillation again results in faster training of the student network compared to other distillation techniques. The authors also further show that in the MNIST 2x5 experiments, they were able to uh, learn the different classes just by using the contrast of loss without even needing the binary label. So they can just uh, push away the twos, the threes, and the fours, and the ones in order to discover these classes just by using the auxiliary subclass discovery loss. One interesting idea behind this subclass distillation and some of the future implications of this is that it might be useful for interpretability. Having the teacher network automatically invent subclasses by imposing this contrast of loss function as well, it gives you some interesting insight into how it's making its predictions because you can kind of visualize what kind of images it's clustering together in a more interesting way than perhaps doing like a low dimensional projection and then like a TS and E visualization because the teacher network is kind of actively doing this in the loss function with the contrast of loss. So it could be an interesting way to see kind of what's going on with the teacher network and what kind of images it thinks are semantically similar. Thanks for watching this explanation of subclass distillation. This is an interesting technique in which the teacher invents these subclasses in order to provide more training signal to the student network, which is especially useful in the case of knowledge distillation for binary classification problems or other classification problems with less labels so that you can provide more information from the teacher to the student network. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.